Hello, Jason Niemeyer here again with another Photoshop tutorial. This time we're going to talk about color balancing. In color balancing we're going to be using levels with the histogram dialog box and the tonal color shifting. We're also going to talk a little bit about a special filter called Unsharp Mask. This is also going to bring a little bit more sharpness and punch to all of our images. I don't believe there's a single digital image out there from any even good quality digital camera today that can't benefit from these two simple procedures. It's going to give that extra impact and brightness and vibrant to your image like a magazine photo or a poster image that you've seen at the store. You've seen those posters they sell. They all look so colorful and bright. We're going to do that. Now right now I'm going to direct your attention to the right hand side of my image here. Here is the histogram dialog box. The histogram is what's going to give us a lot of information about our image. So you don't really need to be a super Picasso here and know a lot about color and, and, and how to change colors and correct it. Me, I'm even just a little bit colorblind. So this, this histogram gives me a lot of information so I know how to change the image and make it better. What's important to realize is here on the far right side of the image, this is the highlighted recorded pixels of the image. This is the mid-range recorded pixels of the image. And this is the shadows or the darker uh, recorded pixels of the image. Now the top one here is the total red, green, blue channels all together. This middle or top one here is uh, the red. This middle one is the green. And this one down here, this blue one is, of course, naturally the blue. So in looking at this histogram, my professionalism tells me that it's pretty terrible. Over here we're not getting a lot of information with regard to the high range. There's just not a lot of data there. And on the ends here, we're not even getting a, real, a whole lot of shadow recorded, but the highlights worse. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the levels dialog box, which is just down here below the layers dialog box. You can see this little yin yang icon. Click that. You can also get it through image up here too, but we're just going to get it down here. Levels, click on it. There it is. Now we can certainly start making adjustments just on the red, green, blue total. But if you don't need to change something, then why bother with it? So I like to come down and do each channel one at a time. So we're going to grab the red and we're going to adjust these sliders. Now you won't see anything take place here because it won't really change it. But it'll change the graph in the real time one up here. So that's kind of neat. So let's just grab this highlighted one and bring it over to where it starts to get thick right there. That's what we want to do. And then we want to bring this one in where it starts to get thick right here. Now notice how it stretched that histogram and made up for the fact that that, was, that data was missing. It changed it. That's what we're looking for. That's pretty cool. Let's come down to the green and do the same thing. Just where it starts to get thick right there. And we'll bring the end one in, the darker one in, and do the same thing. Now we're going to come down to the blue. And you can go past it where it's a little thick too if you want to give it a little bit more contrast. You can do whatever you want. It's your picture. But I just like to go right to the end of the graph. That's the standard process. And then just click OK. Now, that's pretty good. It looks great. I'm going to slide this histogram out of the way so we can see in our history area here what we had before. I'm going to click that. This is what we have now. We made the changes. That was before. Looks terrible. That's what the changes. Looks great. Before, terrible. With the changes, looks great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this image because we have two separate layers here. We have our fix we have the actual background. So I'm going to go into the Layers dialog box and flatten the image. Okay, one more step we have to do is we're going to sharpen this image. So we're going to go up into the Filters dialog box and we're going to bring out Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. Now with the Unsharp Mask dialog box open you notice that we have three basic settings. Amount, Radius, and Threshold. And setting those is kind of important. With the amount, we really want to keep that between anywhere between 100 and 150. 150 would be a lot. I like to keep it right around 125 for most images. The radius, you can get away with going up to 4 on that. 4 would be a lot. I like to keep it around 1.9 or 2. The threshold, this is the real destructive one if you're not careful. If you've got a lot of highlights or a lot of flesh tones in your image, you want to keep this down even to almost 0, 0 to 1. There isn't a lot of highlights in this image, so I did turn it up a little bit. Plus, we have a lot of blurring going on in the background, and that's generally pretty normal for a picture like this with a zoom lens. But I still think it could benefit from being a little higher on the threshold, so we'll keep it at 4. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I want you to see the difference now before and after uh, all the changes that we made. This is the after, of course. Here's the before. We did anything, even including the color balancing. And here's the after.
Isn't that phenomenal? I'm going to bring in a couple of other images that I also did. This beautiful picture of the horse I took. Some horses in a field. This is the before. Here's the after with the same effects. Isn't that awesome? I've got another picture I want to show you. Beautiful skydiving image. That's the before. There's the after. Isn't that beautiful? One last image I want to show you. Let me zoom back on it so you can see the image in its entirety. This is our beautiful state capitol here in Iowa. That's the before. It looks like a great picture. It's hard to believe it can be improved on, but it can. There's the after. Before, after. Now I'm going to click before one more time, and then I'm going to even zoom on the image a little bit so you can really see the difference. There's the before. There's the after. Awesome stuff. This is Jason Niemeyer. You want to see some more tutorials? Let me know. If you like what you're seeing, you got any uh, suggestions, tips, you want to see something, let me know. I'll be happy to let you know how to do it.